What up, guys? We're back again for another episode of King's Court, Season 2, Episode 4. Today, we're a smaller group. It is just me, your lovely host, James, and the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only owner of Kingslayer and producer of King's Court, Richard something Garcia. We'll never find out his middle name. How you doing, Richard? I'm doing great. You know, you only have to ask for my middle name, I'll tell you. Nah, nah, it's okay. We'll leave that the mystery for the ladies tonight, you know? <laughs> uh, so today is, is going to be a fun little video. I mean, not video, on um, podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about worlds. We have some stories we want to put out there that we, we are for our experience in, Tex in Houston, Texas. Um, and we're going to, you know, dabble a little bit everywhere today. Uh, so we're going to start off, you know, if you haven't seen worlds, you haven't seen what won it. Um... Basically, Gear Chronicles took Premium and V. The only reason why they didn't touch D is because Chrono Jet's not out. But, you know, when Chrono Jet comes, it, they'll run the gauntlet. And maybe Bushro decide to actually care about the metas. And hit Steam Maidens even more. Um, but we're going to mainly talk about the, the variety of decks that were out there. So today's little segment that's going to start off, we're going to have Richard tell us his thoughts about what was played, you know, how he feels about the meta, and we're just going to let Richard talk for this this podcast, because I heard a lot of people don't like my voice. I'm just kidding. I don't know, <laughs> really. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to pass it to Richard. Uh, so what do you got to say today? Okay, so first, I have the results here of what everybody took for playing in Worlds. What do you think the most attended format was? What had the most players? D. And. Eh. Premium. Try again. Yep, premium. premium. Surprising. So premium had forty-five players in the world's tournament. Um, here is what everyone was playing. We had thirteen Bermuda players, <laughs> nine Gears, seven Narukami, four Spikes, three Mega Colony, two Pale Moon, two Link Joker, one Shadow, one Aqua Force, one DP, one Grand Blue, and one Genesis. That one shadow player. Can I can I give a shout out to who he was? Of course, Andrew Kondrick playing Luard Gize. Yep, we also had um. This was a really weird one. Like, by the way, he got tenth. So don't don't crack on him. Tenth out of forty five is pretty good. That is pretty with Gize. The best players <laughs> in the world. Remember that. I didn't think spikes would be the fourth most deck. Because it's like Bermuda's Gears, Narukami, Spikes. I thought like Pale Moon would be more up there. Pale well, Moon only had two players. Well, people didn't want to play Pale Moon because one, nobody really knows how to actually pilot that deck, surprisingly. And Spikes, I, I, I can see why Spikes was being there because from seeing it in person and having somebody on the team that plays it, Spikes are very aggressive. And they can kill you before you even get the grade three. And on top of that, with the over trigger, it just makes them super more aggressive. You know, because imagine, imagine turn three, Rising Nova, you get the two force markers. You already got a rear guard with a crit and 10k more. But then if you hit the over trigger, your Vanguard's always going to swing for lethal. And then from there, it's just like, you know, who's going to stop you? You're, no no G guard is going to really stop you. Mm -hmm. And you get, a if you give them all the counter blasts, you're literally going to get like almost like 15 to 20 attacks. Like it, I can understand why people were actually playing spikes. I just didn't think people knew about it. Like, you know, there's no Royal Paladin player with our secret deck that no one wants to touch, Spice. which is just jewel Knights. <laughs> Damn it. Um, well, I mean, it's surprising cause you have to understand a lot of people like to see other tournaments and see where people are playing. So, you know, who, who's to say that, you know, they didn't stumble on to one of our, our, our YouTube channel and saw Marshall with Spikes or saw him with Grand Blue mm -hmm. or any of our videos, which, yeah, you should guys should definitely watch our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of deck profiles, a lot of uh, games being played. Um, little side note. But, yeah, I can see why a lot of people were playing, you know, Spikes in these, these decks. I'm surprised... That not there wasn't more Grand Blue players. Only one Grand Blue player playing just Beatrice. It looks like no Scare Dick crap. 
Yeah, see, that's the big surprise. Grand Blue is probably the best you uh, toolbox deck that I've I've seen in the for in the game, and I'm surprised it's not up there. Maybe Highlander. High, the, okay, Highlander is without one card is shit. Yeah, but that one card does everything. Exactly, Kateri needs to go. Mm -hmm. Kateri needs to go. Without Kateri, the deck is shit. Yep. And without that stupid, there's two cards in, Ber in Bermudas that I think that need to go by. Kateri and the stupid guard bitch, the one that gets really back. I think it's top idol Aqua. She gets, she's like, when you throw her down, she gets a big shield. I could be wrong. I, I'm not a Bermuda fucking. It's not expert. Aqua, I think. It's some fucking card that gets really big. It's almost like a G Guardian, in V. It's a dumb card. Anyways, like the fact that you can play that deck and 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 Kateri is the biggest filter. Kateri at one doesn't stop anything. Like Kateri, no, because you go. you play her at like one or two anyway. Yeah, and you you're just gonna grab her and find her and then take the, take it both out of the deck and then you have one ups for the rest of the day. So yeah, no wonder everybody played fucking Bermuda. Bermuda. Half of W, I think of all of WCC played Bermuda. Mm -hmm. Like if you look up that list, I guarantee you they're all represented by WCC. Like that's it. Like they're like, oh, we're gonna play. WCC. Ooh, we're gonna play Bermuda because we're there. Ooh, I have no. They can't play nothing else. That's all. I'm, I'm calling them out. I don't care. If you listen to this, play something else for Bermudas. Yeah, we don't like Bermudas here. Mm. I know we live in South Florida and we live by the water, but I don't respect the Bermuda. Anyways, what what else do we have there? Um, I think well, someone took DP, which I thought was awesome for. Premium. <laughs> hey, listen. The best of one format. It's it's like Frankie Piano says, PG or GG. That's it's simple as that. If I break your guard, you ain't surviving five crits. You hit the over break it over trigger, you ain't surviving. Like you're dead. So mm -hmm. I can understand why that that's a hey to me. Contolis is to that guy. Like congrats. I I give him compliments. He went into that meta like giving no fuck. Yeah, he has balls. Yeah, he was like, I'm going to beat the shit out of people. I would like to know how he did, by the way. Like, if he Yeah, did, I don't think I have that. I just have what they played. Well, Besides top eight. If you're hearing me and you're, you're listening to our podcast or you know the person personally and you are listening to the podcast, yo, hit us up and let me know how you did because I respect DP players. So uh, what else? Okay, so we got the one Grand Blue. We got the one Shadow player. Which we know personally. We one Aqua Force one Aqua player Aqua Force. was Commander Jaime, which he always plays Aqua Force. Shout out to the Commander, you know. And I think that's about it for Premium. Right, so, per, per, per Premium was basically all the decks we thought. Gear yeah. Chronicles, Steam Ma basically Steam Maidens. Bermuda. Nor Bermuda, Norikami. Uh, and then, what was the other one? Spikes. Spikes, yeah. But those decks we talked about in our podcast saying that mm -hmm. they were going to be there. Let's go to V Premium. Oh, that that's that's a dumpster fire. So V Premium had thirty eight players playing, mm -hmm. and <laughs> if you, you can already guess what the most one okay so popular gonna, one was. Twenty Steam Maidens. Twenty Steam Maidens is correct. Really? Yes, exactly twenty. Twenty half the meta. More than half. It was thirty eight. That that's stupid. Twenty Steam Maiden, four Shadow Paladin, three Bermuda. Two Narukami, two Genesis, two Aqua Force, one Golds, one Great Nature, one Link Joker, one Grand Blue, and one Royal Paladin. And we know what happened to the Royal Paladin guy. It was Alt Mile. Yeah, and no wonder. We hit the the Gold Paladin guy actually got top four. There was only one of them. Yeah. That's a good that's a good conversion. Guy. Good guy. Good guy. We know the one Great Nature player. He was gonna send hamsters up James's butt. We won't talk about that story yet. <laughs> that that was a BCS no a B, uh, Spring Fest uh, story. Um, we know who the shadow player is. Shout out to the crow coming in third place with Luard. He did fantastic against all his matchups, but you know double crit is double crit. You can't prevent it. Sh uh, shout out to Card Dweeb and Team. Eclipse. There was also two Genesis players. One of them was playing Himiko. No Angel? 
Huh? No Angel? <laughs> yeah, he, he, isn't, no. he, isn't he the best Angel player, uh, Genesis player around? We'll see uh, in two weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's a good spot to uh, talk about our, our event in two weeks. I can't believe it's only two weeks away. <laughs> it's two weeks away, and uh, and if you're wondering what is two weeks away, it is a, another KSC Invitational Challenge to come by. To, to join, hopefully win a invite to our Invitational, which will be at a later given date. It'll be sometime October sometime or October. November. Okay. Um, first place premium on Sunday is going to be a PS5. So if you still don't have yours, there's your chance to try to win it. It's literally first place guaranteed PS5. And then money trickled down for everybody else for top eight. And then you got overdressed Saturday. Which is going to be cash money. Who does not like cash money? And on top of that, you get to see me, James, the, the one and the only, Richard Garcia. You get to see all of Team Kingslayer because they will be there. This is your chance. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you only get this chance once or twice if you live in South Florida, you know, or multiple times, you know. But if you're coming from a different state and coming to the Ramada, this is probably be the first time you get the guys get to play against world-class uh, players. We got Andrew Condrick coming in, who plays 10th in premium. We got Crow coming from the the Dirty South, you know, Atlanta, representing Georgia up there. The Dirty South, which is north of us. Well, yeah, north of us, but we'll say the Dirty South. But we got Crow coming out, who got third place in V premium. Not with Gears. Not with Gears. Which is what he won with. With, with Which he was the founder of Steam Maidens. In, in my ple- in, in my opinion, no one else can take that away from him. So he's coming out, and then you got you know Naru, which I don't think he's gonna play D. He's gonna be commentating because he's scared, and he doesn't want to lose. Uh, shout out to Team Eclipse, you know. I don't know if Card Dweeb will be there. Uh, I heard rumors that he might show up, but he, th- hey, that that sounds like a world class tournament if I can say. And it's cash money. You you know you get a, you get a nice little cash. We're happy. You get your your mat. You don't get a little card that doesn't have anything on it. You know you get that cash money to buy anything you want. You know it's gonna be a great time. Great great fucking time. That what what dates is it again? It's literally in two weeks. So February twenty fifth and twenty sixth. Okay. Make sure you guys book your 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 reservation for the hotel. It's not that expensive. It's the Ramada in Kissimmee. Super amazing place. I'm going to the pool. Richard doesn't like going to the pool because he doesn't want to get his luscious hair done. Ladies, you know, we'll go to the podcast. It's a lot of work keeping this hair, James. You cried the last time you got a haircut. Almost cried. He almost cried. Ladies, he has a sensitive heart, guys, okay? Um, but we'll talk about Richard later in the end of the podcast. Um, but yeah, show up guys. I'm telling you if you want the best competitive scene That is not just worlds that you could not make it come to the Ramada Please show up We have the best staff. We love the game. We love to hear your opinion and guess what we heard you guys We heard you guys and when I, I'm gonna say this a three time. We heard you guys We banned the OT in premium we're going to test it out. You asked for it, and we gave it to you. Vision, we, we when we partnered with Vision's no band tournament, OT tournament, it went great. And guess what? Vision's coming. One, of the, uh, one I think one or two people from Vision are showing up at the event. Guess what? They're playing no OT premium. Let's do it for the PS5. You guys, put, you two guys talk all that smack about the OT. Guess what? It ain't there no more. Let's find out who really is the best. And you know what? If it ends up working good, hey, we might just ban the OT altogether. But we'll see how it goes. But hey, show up or don't, you know, don't talk shit. Just show up. Say you're the best, come out there. I know Sylvie, Sylvie Sears will be there. You know, he, he got the chops. Okay? And you know, everybody's going to be there. It's going to be a great time. Um... But yeah, we're so yeah, we're gonna go back to the so what else? Now we're gonna go to dress, right? Yeah. So yeah, 
I mean, you, Over, you want to talk more about V. I, I, there's I not much that. to talk about V. It's Steve Maiden still without the piano. It, it's annoying. They got Did they get first and second per, uh, Steve Maidens? Yes. Yeah, let's and just I to, believe fourth. We, no, fourth was Golds. Okay, we won't talk about that. Enough about that. But enough about that. Yeah, enough. Let's go that. straight to Overdress. Yeah, straight to Overdress. Overdress had 43 players. Ooh, oh, so you're telling me you went eh, wrong by two players. Yes, yes. You, you son of a gun. <laughs> it was close. You, so let me guess. I'm going to read your mind. Hmm. What's the most popular deck? Uh, youth Perks. How many Youth Perks? Uh, 43 players. I'm going to go 18. 21 Youth Perks. Oh, a little, little up there. I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, because only because Chrono Jet's not out yet. Yeah, and then everybody that number. If, okay, I'm gonna tell you a little hypothetical theory. If Chrono Jet was out and legal at that event, I guarantee that number would have been like 35. Half that tur- majority of that tournament, about 65 to 75 percent, would have been Chrono Jet. Yeah, and you only pay what 55 bucks for the box, right? Yeah, 50 it's bucks. ridiculous. I, I, I have a rant, but I'm gonna bring that up later because I have I have some things I want to say to Bush Road before before we end this podcast. But we're gonna talk about the other stuff first, and then we'll bring it there because I have some things that I, I need to get off my chest. But we'll talk about that later. So we had 21 Youth Burks, four Luticia, that's the oh, that's new the lyrical. Rita. That's the lyrical. Three Eva. Okay. Three Flagberg, two Overlord, with the promo. Two Gravidia, two Orphist, one Zorga, one Magnolia, one Grade Four Nirvana, one Grade Four Bruce, one Prison, and one Greedon. So would you tell me there was no Thagorias? There was no other Keter besides those twenty-one Youth Burks. No other Keter deck. I wonder why. But well, enough about that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, something interesting here both Orphis made top 8 there was only 2 of them yeah Orphis is strong shout out to Kevin Bacon happy uh, if you're, you know, I know you listen to us Kevin but happy happy late birthday you know I'm shouting you out my boy the, I think Kevin Bacon is one of the best freaking Orphis player at the shop I don't care what anybody else says if, if we put him on into worlds he probably would have won the whole thing I'm not gonna lie but shout out to the people that play Youthburg because Youthburg is really good I, I hate people that don't think it's good. It's good. Youthburg? No, not Youthburg. Sorry, Orphis. I think people that play Orphis like underestimate that deck. Yeah, Orphis is good. Orphis is really fucking strong. Only two Gravidia too. I thought there'd be I, more I Gravidia. I have no respect for Gravidia players. I really don't. I think that deck needs to, to literally go to the fire and brimstone. That that, that, that the that, sulfur that, and brimstone. Whatever. That shit needs to go. That shit needs to go obsolete. I. I, I when Gravidia first came uh, came out, this is a little bit of a side note. When that deck came out, and I read it, I was like, "What the fuck is Bushiro thinking? You uh, you already put the over trigger that double. You already have the over trigger that doubles power and doubles crits. You literally made a fucking deck to come out that said, oh, a counter blast one, so blast, uh, get, take away five meteors. If you take away five, give herself what an extra crit." And she and she fucking doubles the fucking power of triggers, and you get to pop my board for each fucking meteor. Like, who the fuck from the from the fucking development team thought this bitch was a fucking good fucking card? Thought this was fucking fair. It's not. It's so fucking dumb. I'm so glad those fucking idiots that played that shit in Worlds fucking lost. Cause if Gravidia would have won, never hear the fucking end of it. Oh, they took so much skill to play that deck. Oh my god, I, I, I could, I, what I did, I had to play five fucking meteors in the board, and then I just sold, I got rid of them, and then I doubled my triggers, and I'm the greatest fucking Gravidia player in the world. No, fucking sit the fuck down. You, you, you're, whoever plays Gravidia, I do not respect. I don't, I don't fucking care for them. I know I threw the P out there, but fucking, I don't respect them. I don't, I don't consider them good players. Literally, the dead deck defines carry. All you do is play fucking cards and carry. No respect for fucking Gravidia. That deck is fucking cancer. Get the fuck out of here. And you can argue me, oh, but James, why are you why are you complaining about that deck? The deck doesn't do anything. The fucking fact that the deck exists means it has potential to be there. And that means it has a chance of winning. Locally, it tops a lot. 
re- I guess at Worlds, these idiots were like, oh, I'm just going to take it. Nothing happened. Luck got them. That's what Vanguard is. Vanguard is fucking luck. But the guaranteed, if luck was on their side and they hit fucking triggers for days and they doubled the power, I guess they would have fucking ruled everybody. And then if they would have won, everybody would be like, oh, now I understand. James is right. No, that fucking deck is fucking cancer. Gravidia fucking sucks my cock. I'm going to say that. I don't give a fuck what, if we get copyrighted or fucking whatever. I hate fucking Gravidia. Bushroad, learn how to make good fucking cards, okay? And we'll, enough about that until later because I got some things I want to get off my chest. So you, you said fuck whatever the fa- those kids were playing. See, I almost dropped it, but I, I'm respectful. You know, g- good try, bro, guys. Good try with your Gravidia decks. What about the one guy playing Greedon? I respect him. Greedon's a good deck. But Greedon, it, it, it takes more strategic ability than Gravidia does. Literally, you have to Well, pray. literally everything takes more strategic ability than Gravidia. Gravidia, you just pray for triggers, and if I you mean, drive check I, meteors, I, you lose. If you drive I check would, triggers, you win. I mean, I, Bastion, I mean... There's more now. There's more in Bastion than fucking Gravidia. I, you know, you're 100% right. But Gravidia, Gravidia is fucking trash. Um... But yeah, the the, the, the great on player, bro, I wish he would have done something. I wish he would have came up on top. Me too. Um, What other was there? There was... Well, we got one Magnolia player, which I was interesting because of the inlet pulls. That is interesting. <laughs> With the ban list being uh, effective at that place, you would think grade four Magnolia or whatever. Was he playing grade four? Yep, grade, grade four. You, now that you can play in both, you'd be like, oh, I got everything in the world. Why not play it? But I, I, but I guess, I guess Flagberg just had the better calling to some people because it was three Flagberg. That you said. Yeah, but and they got their promo. Yeah. So that's another attack, right? I mean, I can see why, but Magnolia, I respect the person, the Magnolia player. They did what they had to do. I mean, I wish they again. I wish our top eight was more. Not, I don't think "define" is the word. More diverse. Like, diverse, yeah. More diverse because then. You know, people are like, oh, Youthburg, you know, yes, Youthburg is a good deck, but there's other decks that can rival it, you know? Yeah, and right now, like, <laughs> I think Orphist was ironically the one deck that was, like, doing well expected. against it. I think, honestly, I'll tell you, I'll t- I'll, I will speak the truth. I don't think Orphist, or, when Orphist was in the top eight, I didn't think it was going to get two, there. Two in the top eight. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to get there. And the guy got second place. Yeah, that that that's why I'm happy. I'm happy. Fuck it. At least it wasn't Youthburg, 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 Youthburg. It was literally Youthburg, Orphist. Uh, I think Evo was in there as yeah, well. I forget what, what I can tell there? you right now. Um, <laughs> as he's looking, as I'm looking for this, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the great things. Also, one life. Zorga player in there too. Uh, yeah, it went Youthburg, Orphist, Youthburg, Eva. Youthburg, Flagberg, Overlord, Orphis. That was the top eight. So Youthburg, Youthburg, Orphis, Youthburg. Yes, and then right. Eva in fourth place. That's fine. Uh, the top four was good. That's all I gotta say. Um, what else? Guys? Gravidia got ninth. We don't talk about Gravidia. Tell that bitch to send the, the fucking death. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Youthburg is good. You know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, Tempest is the greatest thing." I think Tempest is all right. I'd rather play Gus. Gus, in my opinion, gives me more, more value. But I, you know, I'm an idiot. What the fuck do I know? Um. But I think this Worlds was very impressive. Um, D was already defined. Youthburg was probably gonna win the whole thing, which it did. Uh, I was more invested in Premium and actually V this time around, because not only did we have players and like friends and players in there. I, I expected a little more, for especially for premium, but Steam Manage just fucking took everything, just like always, and same thing for fucking V, Steam Manage just fucking took everything, because, you know, Bush Road doesn't know how to fucking ban the right cards, or fucking properly adjust their fucking game, um, but, but enough, enough about that, but enough about that, um, so, that, that was what happens with Worlds, um, so I think the the next topic we're gonna talk about is what happened in, in Houston. We'll give you a little story time. You know, I wish we had a little China's like story time with James 
or something like that. You just did it. That's fine. Okay. Well, th- don't get a habit of that. Um, so yeah, uh, you got, we told you guys we were at TCG Con Houston, uh, first time ever going to Houston. I mean, at least myself. Have you ever been to Houston before? I don't think so. So this was both first time going to Houston, and I just want to say, from the time we left, like g- getting there, the beginning plane was great. But these 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 people are, uh, that make planes, they need to make these planes bigger. Cause man, coming back was hell. Okay, but going going up there, I had a great time. I I, I got I sat next to my friends. Yeah, you didn't have the little kids behind you. Hey, the yeah, I didn't have the little kids. Just I don't know if you can hear that. Like literally banging at the back of Richard's chair. <laughs> he was so mad. Uh, but no, I actually hanged out with a bunch of like I want to say. I, they're from Florida. They were they were these these people were from Florida, but they're like Polish people, or people like whatever they were they were going. They brought all their kids to do a uh, gymnastic tournament, and Frankie made friends with the, this little girl. Was like looking at Frankie and was like, "You my friend. Look at me lift my leg and like do all these poses and crap on the plane, guys. I'm being serious. Like on the plane, this the the flight attendants gave no fucks. These these girls were like. Little girls just doing splits, like doing little crazy things, making beads and crap. And then this little girl goes up to the goes up to the dad, and dude, I died laughing. But it, I was like, every little kid says this to their parents when they see me. They go, he she whispers to her dad in Polish, like something like, I can't speak Polish, so I was like, blah, 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 whatever. And she's he's like, I'm like, she just said something, right? She's he's like, yeah. She acts. He started the guy. The dad started laughing. And you and Frankie goes, what did she say? And he says, uh, the dad goes, uh, she asked why he's so big. And if you know me, I'm a big guy. I'm a heavy set guy. And Frankie just died laughing. The little girl just smiled with the biggest grin in her face. And then the dad was like, I can't believe my kid just said that out loud. And I was just there. I'm just laughing. I was like. Just, and I was like, reply to her, I'm I'm on vacation. And he goes, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm on vacation. I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> and the dad was like, oh, okay. He started laughing too. But the plane ride was fun. I thought Frankie said he's that big because he doesn't eat vegetables. No, he's an idiot. <laughs> Probably that too. But I, in my head, I said Santa Claus, whether he heard me or not. Um, But no, yeah, we got off the plane. Our plane was like delayed before we got on the plane. We were, we were supposed to be there like three o'clock in the afternoon. We didn't get there until five because of a delay at the airport. Um, so when we got off the plane, we had, of course, we went to go rent. We had a whole thing kerfuffle of talking about whether we're gonna rent a car or Uber. We fought for like a good twenty minutes, and then we decided to rent a car. We got the car, a nice car. Richard's never drawn a different car besides his truck. How did you like That's that? That's bullshit. Okay, well, the car was a, nice. You had a red car, but nothing like this. This was no. luxury. That was a very nice car. How, how, how much? How much did you like it? Not more than my car. Would you buy one if you had no. one? You, I ruined this segment. No, you're an idiot. <laughs> no, well, the car was really nice. Um, we we got into the car and then we were like, oh, we're gonna go out to eat, whatever. But everybody's like, oh, let's go to the, the hotel. I'm like, okay, let's go to the hotel. We're, we're at the hotel. Mind you, it's fucking cold. I, we went to Texas, and I'm like, this place is going to be hot. It's going to be nice. I have shorts. I went the whole... I just bought one fucking jacket. One fucking long sleeve shirt. And I was like, I get out of the thing, freezing my nut sacks. Freezing my balls. And I'm like, this is fucking horrible. It was like 50 degrees. No, it was like 40. Like It was nighttime. You got to uh, deviate nighttime and daytime, okay? Okay. So daytime night, was 50. Yeah, 50 was like daytime. Nighttime was like 35, 40. I was like, I was pissed. So we, we get to the hotel and we check it in and everything. And everybody's like, what do you guys want to eat? And I'm like, uh, I'm down for anything. I'm thinking we're going to order food or drive to get food. So I'm like, I'm ready. I'm like, I'm down for everything. Eric Zarita goes, hey, I know a barbecue place. It's about four to five blocks from here. A brisk 12-minute walk. A brisk 12-minute ro- walk. And I'm like, 
Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit okay with it. I'm thinking, but we have a car. We're going to just drive there, right? We get down to the lobby. We're leaving. We we'll get we'll go to the garage area, and we don't go to the car. And I'm like, why the fuck are we not taking the car? And everybody's like, we're going to walk. It's just a 12-minute brisk walk. They, I've never been lied to like that in my life. That was not 12 minutes. It was 12 minutes. It was not fucking 12 minutes. Okay. I was dying. Okay. It was fucking cold. I was fucking tired. We rented a car for a reason. And I fucking was fucking crying. I was in pain. Uh, fucking everything. Bro. And then these idiots decide to run, like, run across the street, leave me by myself. I'm over here, one hand on the back, like an old man. I should have had a cane. And out of nowhere, it felt like fucking GTA. I see a fucking car spin in front of me, like passing the red light and almost hit a guy with a fucking, uh, on a bike. The guy with the bike jumps off the bike, starts running and, and doing some like, you know, fucking San Andreas, like fighting stance, bobbling left and right. And these guys, these three guys, I think it was like two guys come out. I, I, I don't want to be racist. I don't want to be any of that. It was... It was like white people, or Spanish, like they were either Hispanic or white people. And they were like, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to get the, you think, stop running away, motherfucker. Stop running away. Excuse me if your kids were watching, you know, this is the time to close your ears. But I, he, this guy was like, I'm going to catch you, motherfucker. Where do you think you're running? And, and, and Richard, I'm over there. And I'm like, I'm going to die. Here comes the Glatt. Here comes the, fuck, the fucking SMG or something's going to come out. Man, Richard and all of them are just laughing at me. They're all looking at me like no one's coming to save my life, save me. I'm over there. My back's killing me. I can't move. I'm trying to pivot away. The guy on the bike is coming toward me. I don't know whether he was trying to use me as a human shield or nothing. And I'm over here. I'm like, I'm going to die. This this is horrible. And, and Richard's just... <laughs> I should have recorded it. Yeah, he should have fucking recorded it because I almost died. Like, literally. So these guys didn't catch the guy. The guy dips. Leave the bike. And the two guys are like, like, look like they were pissed off. They're like, look, your ass ran. You run, whatever. When I catch your ass, I'm going to beat your ass. And I, they get back in the car. And I'm thinking they're going to drive nice and slow. No, they go. And then they fucking do like a three, uh, like a, a 180 fucking turnaround and just zip it. And I'm like, I could have fucking died in Houston. These motherfuckers made me walk a tw air quotation. Brisk. A brisk 12 minute fucking walk. And I almost died my first night in Houston. Anyways, to continue the story, it gets worse. Yeah, you guys are like... Well, it gets oh, better I, first, no, James. No, 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 no. This fucking gets worse, okay? Okay, because fuck the, fuck the food. The food was great. No, shout out to Houston. Great fucking Texas barbecue, okay? But it's what... We finally get there. I'm fucking crying because I'm fucking mad because I almost died. And I literally... My back's fucking in pain. I'm fucking cold. My nuts are frozen over. And I'm like, I, now I'm fucking depressed. I'm sitting in this fucking food place. And I'll get my food and everything. The food was fucking great. About an hour later, you know, I'm smiling. I'm having a good time again. We walked a... F I forgot about the 12 minutes, 12 brisk minutes to walk back to the hotel. After eight, let me be honest with you guys. Nobody wants to walk after they eat good food. Okay? Have you ever been to Izzy Bun? Or at a Korean restaurant, or any place where it's just a food so damn good you can't move. Let me tell you, that's what happened to me. I didn't want to move. I, I wanted to roll back to the hotel room. But no, we had to do the 12, brisk, 12 minute brisk walk back to the hotel room. As we're going there, no offense again, we see two random people running. I won't say any colors. I won't say any race. I won't say nothing. I saw two people run. But this time we were all walking together. We all, yeah, yeah, yeah. After be yelling after him for 30 minutes. Yeah. We were all walking together. We saw two people running. Bro, let me tell you something. This is all in one night. These guys ran so fast that you know they did something wrong when they, they leave their jacket behind. They literally changed clothes so the cops wouldn't see them. Literally through behind a church. So not only did I see Jesus looking down on us, you know, I'm praying that he's protecting us. These guys are just running around 
and then we hit the corner to go back to where our, our hotel room is. There's a truck just sitting there with a lady in, and 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 Eric goes up to the lady and says, "Hey, what's going on?" And the girl's like, "That guy just got robbed. I think he got stabbed too." And then I turn to the corner, I see two pink shoes on the floor, and a guy on the floor, and two cops looking at him, and one guy's like, just fidgeting, and I'm like, did I just witness a shanking? Like, first I almost get run over like GTA style. I almost die, and now I witness a, a, a possible murder. Thank you, Richard, for taking me to Texas. Houston, Texas, guys. Don't go there at night, okay? Don't go to downtown. If you're gonna go downtown, bring a knife. Protect yourself. Because I, I, I'm never doing that shit again. Richard, I swear to God, we ain't going to an open... If we get a car, we're driving a car. You realize none of this would have happened uh -huh. if the hotels didn't have the same address. Okay, we won't talk... Oh, my God. Yeah, Richard's an idiot. Richard literally booked... We don't know if we went to the right hotel, but we had a room. But there was two... Uh, the hotel had two different locations with the same address. One near the venue and one away from in downtown. The other one was probably a brisk twenty five minute walk. No, it wasn't. That that was not a twenty five minute walk. What? Like from hotel to hotel? Yeah. Oh yeah, from hotel to hotel like twenty five minute block, brisk walk. But from venue to the hotel was like what, five, six minutes? For yeah, from the one that I thought I booked. Oh, yeah. But they had the same address. It's, you can we, see how I would get confused. Richard I've almost, never heard of that before in my life. Richard almost uh fucking screwed us over it was crazy you know we ship things very regularly here at ksc we have a very popular tcg player so we deal with addresses a lot i have never seen a hotel with the same address and then like seven blocks down another hotel with the same address so yeah if i had walked into the one next to the venue instead of the one we were at james would not have gotten almost mugged we wouldn't have witnessed a shanking None of this fun stuff would be available. So you should be thanking me, James. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So that is story time with James and Richard Garcia. That's our little segment for that. Now, enough about that. We're going to go to another segment. And and this is where I'm, I'm going to rage. And, and, you know, I know you guys have been asking for raging with the Messiah. I know you miss him. Well, you know... He's just a busy guy, guys. He's just so busy doing One Piece now. He has forsaken the church. Yeah. You know, he, he, well, he hasn't forsaken it. He's put it off to the side. He's, he's, he's on the One his, Piece church. He's letting the popes take over. And, you know, the Messiah, you know, he's just being a, a pirate now. It's, it, I know it's a sad day. He has the hat and everything. Can, can we take a mo like a two-second moment of silence to, for our Ali for joining the pirates? How dare, how dare he, you know? So we'll take a two-second thing. But enough about that. Anyways. Um, okay. So, I've been thinking lately. And Richard has no idea where I'm going to go with this. This is this is my time right now. What was Bush Road thinking? Making Overdress. Making Nirvana the main star. And then throwing it in the fucking trash. They've never done that with a main character deck. But in Overdress, they told Nirvana to eat a cock. To eat a chode. Like, basically, you are useless. When, when have you ever seen that, Richard? They, they threw the main character's deck in the trash. It's like I said last week. Overdress is like the opposite of everything we've learned in Vanguard for the past, like, nine years or whatever. Yeah. It's just the opposite. And, and let me tell you. Will dress Nirvana? So many fucking problems. You wanted to introduce fusion and like all this other stuff, and you didn't do it the right way. The deck sucks. The deck is too cloggy. The deck does nothing. The Grade Four is still the better deck. And you want to know why? Because you expected to mix fusions and whatever and and not given any kind of sort of plus to it it's all negatives i have to take two cards fuse them together to use another card in my deck to become that unit and it's still worse than the original like virina arcs and stuff like that yeah it's not as good 
So let me tell you, Bush Road, if you're fucking listening, I love you guys. I want to help y'all. If you want me to join your team, I can work, you know, half time, you know, Bush Road, you know, North America. Um, why the fuck would you introduce, uh, these, what do they call them? Overdress units or X cross units? X overdress. X overdress units. Okay. Let me tell you how you fix Nirvana. You take all the X ex- X dress units and you put it in a fucking side deck. That way the cards are not in the fucking deck, which opens more space to use in, in the deck. Put, a, put for Nirvana. You want to make Nirvana special guys? Let me, let me, let me help you guys. You take the XO dress and you put a seven card limit, a seven to eight card limit on the side for only XO dress units. And you put that as a little side deck. That way, when you have the cards on the board, you grab them, you fuse them, you put it on top. You know, now that opens eight slots in the deck for you to fuse. And then you're like, okay, James, well, what happens when they get destroyed? Guess what? The EXO unit goes back into the fusion deck. You still need the material. So guess what? The grade three is still usable because it gets you a trick start and a, 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 uh, uh, what, uh, what do they call those things? A blade uh, fucking, I forget what they fucking call it. I haven't played the deck in forever. Uh, an equip card, equip mo- dragon or whatever. You literally have that in the deck. You grab it from the drop. You get the fusion card from the extra deck again. Simple as that. Open eight slots. Because you know what's killing Nirvana? It's the fact that you have to have spots for your Exo Dress. You have to have the spot for the Equip Dragons. You have to have the spots for the Trick Stars. Guess what? Where's the utility? Where's the... the what makes that deck good? And now they now Bushroad's like, Oh, guys, guess what? In one of our episodes, we're going to show you how to use Exo Dress and Overdress in the same deck. But you get no benefits for both. So choose your choose your side. No. Listen. You can have overdress in the deck and just splash the exo dress as a side piece, a sideboard. That's how you're gonna fix Nirvana. Give give that deck if you're gonna really not only did you make that deck overdress, which is the only deck that can overdress. We're not talking about Revolve form. We're not talking about anything like Alchemagic and all that shit. We're talking about literally Overdress. And Exo Dress or whatever. Fucking Cross cross Dress. Literally. Put that shit as a side deck. That deck sucks so much garbage. Literally, there you do not benefit from anything in that deck. You don't get no pluses. You can't, like, you have to, if you play Arcs in the deck, it hinders you because you need other pieces. The, the, the Nirvana just Bushroad was like We're just gonna throw in A new main character You know why? Cause we have Youthberg Youthberg is getting All the money And you wanna know Why Youthberg is so expensive Guys Is because How shitty Nirvana is Cause if you look Into the set That Youthberg showed up What was in the set? You had uh, Nirvana uh, Lar- What was that? Uh, what, The Jeweled Right? And something else And Nirvana sucked. The Jeweled sucked until the second set. Leonor, no one fucking talks about Leonor. That that deck sucks. So what happened? One deck had to be expensive. And guess what? One deck they really gave a fuck about was Youthberg. The the, the fucking episode was lit. People made mini videos of the uh, fucking of the thing that made it fucking crazy. Like, it was so fucking good. So so good at it, you know, animation and everything. Of course, fucking Youthberg, uh, Youthberg is 45 fucking dollars a piece. Tempest is 65. You Because Nirva- there's nothing to rival him. Until two weeks. Yeah, and then, then, then let, me, let me add on to that now. So Nirvana fucking sucks. I already told you how you should fucking fix it. They're not going to listen. You guys are probably thinking that's going to be broken. But I, I already have a rant for that when, when you guys argue with me saying, oh, they shouldn't have a side deck. This The whole game needs a fucking side deck. Because there's 30 cards in the main deck is not enough space to tech, in my opinion. It, it, it's getting to a point where now 
I can't afford to take out staples because staples are almost tw- about 65% of the deck. And guess what? I'm going to have to... We're going to talk about... We'll talk about this in a second. When you say, when I say 65% of the deck, that's also including fucking promos. That, guess what? We're going to talk about that in a second, but let me let me finish about fucking uh, uh, Youthberg and shit. Youthberg is expensive because Nirvana fucking sucks, right? Then you got Chrono Jet coming out and Messiah. And let me tell you about Chrono Jet. I like Chrono Jet. I, I care about, I like Messiah. Why the fuck would you put the only two decks that stride into dress? It is the most broken fucking thing in the game when it comes out. And, and you're going to be like, but it hasn't come out in America. Go to Japan and see how many people are playing fucking uh, Chrono Jet. Look at all the fucking pl- places that are playing Chrono Jet. Chrono Jet has been topping forever. And your, your counter argument is like, oh, but Youthberg. Yes, Youthberg can fight toe-to-toe with it. But it, it that, that, that Chrono Jet deck is made to demolish majority of the fucking meta. And my problem with that is that is exactly what happened in Worlds. If, if Chrono Jet was here and viable at Worlds, it would have been Gear Chronicle Central. And you know what people, what Bushra would have done? Nothing. They don't know how to fucking ban cards. They don't know how to fucking fix their own fucking problems. They think that giving a fucking crest that allows you to fucking stride is fair. It is not fair. You already get 5k to the fucking board. You're already getting super fucking draw power. And you're asking me, but the decks are not. How do you know this? Listen, CFA is a thing. Card Fight Arena is a fucking thing. People are playtesting it. People are, are, are proxying fucking decks. A deck should not be able to multi attack, draw infinite, gain power, and stride. That is bullshit. Especially at a price of what? $55 for a basic one and a hundred and what? Almost two hundred dollars for the premium set, Richard. One ninety. Yeah, we're, we're which we for? sold out of. We sold out of, right? Yes. So you get a little fucking marker that says you can stride. Your front row gets five k. I get to do everything the fucking world does, and I'm the best deck in the fucking format running it out. That is bullshit. That is not good fucking uh, R and D. You you promised us, Bush Road, that. This, that when Overdress came out, one, it was going to be cheap. Two, it was going to, it was cheap enough for people to get into. You told me, you promised us that decks are going to be fucking viable. You told me there was no fucking clans and you do the opposite. Which I have no problem with the encounter because I love old cards. But now you're going to, I already know, guys, I already know the next fucking encounter uh, deck is going to be. Like uh, fucking my, uh, uh, Mel- uh, Maelstrom and uh, Minerva and all them. But the next super deck is going to be Luard. Lu- if we're going to go with G decks, Luard, Alt Mile, fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Asha. Asha. What's stopping them to fucking coming from D? And you know what? I'm going to give a shout out to Peter. Because I think, you know what? Fuck it. Peter's right. I think they're just going to make fucking... They're just putting everything into G into D. Soon we're gonna have strikes. Then why the fuck did we get rid of G? What the fuck is the difference with all these formats? It's it's fucking dumb. I'm telling you, Chrono Jet and Messiah coming to D. As much as I like them as as like 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 character wise, and I like how they play and whatever like that. They do not belong in D. Striding does not belong in D. There, there should be no fucking reason why they they are getting privileged to being striding in in D. Grade fours are going bye bye, because we already see that happening. Grade fours are going bye bye because per, they're realizing Persona is just a better fucking mechanic, and they're reworking every fucking starter deck. Bruce was first. They basically took away full rush and made it full what full burst. He doesn't his grade four deck sucks now. All the old uh, the, all, all the cards that in Dark State 
They're restricting. So might as well you might as well call Bruce Spike Brothers. Cause you can only play Diablos. Lakir's out, you can only play fucking fucking uh, some stuff in there. So where the fuck did nations go? No, we just became clans again. Again, I have no problem with it for one reason. Because now premium can benefit from it because there's clan cards. But why the fuck would you do that? What is your plan, Bushroad? Like, I want you to guys to, like, listen, guys. If this episode really gets gets to you and I want you guys to care, if you find somebody or know somebody that works for fucking Bushroad, tell them about this part of the fucking video. Because I want to know. I want to know what the fuck they're thinking that that they said they have what seven years of the anime more it's like five more years i think 2025 or 2027 or whatever and you're telling me we're just gonna go back to g why the fuck did we leave what was the point of it and 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 now we're gonna go to even a more dire situation why am i paying 30 fucking dollars 35 dollars for each fucking promo Where's my fucking promo, Bushy? Where's my Thuggeria promo? Where's my Blaster promo? Where's my Dragonic Overlord promo? How come Thailand is getting it first? Why, you guys have it three months in the fucking advance. We're over here at KMC sending you two fucking emails. We love you guys. No, like, we're not trying to bash you fully, but I want to know where our fucking promos are at. <coughs> I want to know where the fucking promos are. You know, like, like seriously, I'm over here buying a place and a f fucking promos for thirty dollars a piece. I have to spend one hundred and twenty dollars for four fucking promos. What are you guys thinking? Then on top of that, you got the Doug Rio promo going twenty dollars, almost twenty five dollars a piece. So that's another hundred dollars, one hundred to eighty dollars. And don't get me started with Eva. Eva started the whole bullshit with promos. Where, where, where is it going to stop? You guys said ten, said 10 was going to have some stuff. We're going to have promos. But I don't believe it. And that's going to be even worse. Because we're going to open these boxes. And if you don't buy cases, you're not going to get your promos. Because these cases are not balanced right. So you, people, are, these promos are going to be fifteen to twenty dollars a piece still, and you know that really, honestly, pisses me off. I'm over here trying to play MLB and buy, uh, buy a PBO and, and dress it. I can't afford to buy two play sets of promos. You're talking about two hundred and forty dollars or three hundred dollars, depending on who wants to fucking buy it. This is getting out of hand, Bushy. This is really getting out of hand. And I know I'm rambling on and everything, but it's the truth, guys. When are they going to stop? When is it going to be, oh, we're going to keep our fucking promise. We're going to we're going to do what we said and we're going to keep our promise basically. Yeah, I know I repeated it twice, but it's the truth. When is it? Like you made all these promises, Bushy, and you you you're not, you really don't care. You fired the one guy that cared about us. Who literally said he came to the uh, United States and saw, you know, stores selling child decks for $25, $35 bucks when they were supposed to be 4 or $5. That shit's gone because you guys fired him. Or you let him go. I don't know the full story. But he's not there no more. And then you got Bush Road Japan. They love, you know, they're in Japan so everybody gets everything. What is the North American branch doing? Nothing. They're not giving us any good ban lists. They're not giving us promos. They're not doing shit. And then you go to the BCS and you go to B a Team League and these promos, there's like one good promo and the rest are ass. When are we going to get the good promos? Like, like, that really grinds me, man. And then you wonder why, you know, people are complaining about quitting Vanguard and leaving because they can't afford the game right now. 
Youth burgers sitting at six to seven hundred dollars a piece. It's crazy. It's like you know what? What are you gonna do? But you know a little bit of, enough about that. You know I'm just you know I I just can't stress it anymore. It, it's it's crazy, guys. It's just it baffles me. And I know I went on a tangent and I went on a, you know a, a thing and you know the, this is my opinion. You know, I respect your opinions, but this is my opinion, guys. I shouldn't have to be paying 35 fucking dollars for a fucking promo that was promised to us. But you know what? People are going to buy it. Nobody's going to listen. And this is always going to happen. Nothing's going to change. And yes, you can argue with me that Bush, North America, Bush Road did the right thing by ban doing their ban list and... And their balance was okay. The balance was fine. The stun burst to one was good. The the piano being gone was great. But they're not going out and looking at every fucking nation or clan and saying this is a problem. No, they're just sh shutting up. Close. I I swear to you. I think this is what happens. They probably take a blindfold. They have a list of cards on the fucking wall and they throw a fucking dart and says that is the flavor of the fucking three months. We're banning this card for no reason. It, it, it really is annoying. And when are they going to listen to us? When are they going to ban, ban the OT? Where Where is the Vanguard that I played for 10 years? And I don't need no damn miracle fucking over trigger to win the game. Where's where was Where is the skill in the game? You're having a bunch of people host tournaments... With you saying, oh, try banning the OT, try doing this. Oh, how do you feel about the T OT? Everybody's telling you it's garbage. And you're not listening. Like that that's what that's what really gets me. You say you care about your community, but you're not listening to the community. Will you ask us to tell us how we feel about the OT? We, we you don't want to listen. You don't want to ban the OT. So when are you going to go out and actually give a fuck about your, your your community? In my opinion, hire back that guy. I forget, you know, not, not to be disrespectful, hire the guy that was here in the beginning of Overdress. Because that man cared. We got our promos. We got everything. And and that's what we need again. We we need Bushroad to, to actually show that they care. So... I hope when set 10 comes, and I guarantee all you to agree with me, I pray that the promos come in the box toppers. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if they don't come in the box toppers, they lied again. And guess what's going to happen to those promos? You're never going to see it. You're going to be paying $30, $35 for the fucking promos. And you're gonna people are going to wonder why, you know, they can't play their favorite decks. Because Bush Road's like... I don't want to send fucking promos. And you know what? It's not Bush Road Japan. It's Bush Road North America. They don't... They There's a bunch of fucking idiots running that fucking company. And again, I love this game. I wouldn't be playing this game. I've been playing this game for 10 years, guys. If you don't know me personally, come get to know me. I love this game with a fucking passion. 10 years of this, guys. And I've never seen this game in a worse status than right now. The OT sucks. Took away the skill in the game. It, they're, 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 I don't. I, I hate Brand Gates over Trigger. There's no skill involved right now in this game. You sent out a stupid newsletter. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I want you to just drill this in your head. At BCS and all these fucking events, they're sending, giving people papers saying, what do you think about the overture? What is this and that? We're all telling you to get rid of it. Why is it taking so long? And I'm not trying to be the, the hero everybody asked for. And I know you probably didn't ask me to be the fucking hero. But someone needs to start fucking speaking the truth. And you know what? I'm going to fucking start doing it. Ban the fucking OT. Give me my fucking promos that I deserve and stop fucking making me spend thousands of fucking dollars. Oh, and on top of that, fuck you and your frame rares. 
Fuck the FFRs. Fuck the frame rates. Bring my back my fucking SPs. Bring back one SP per, for a fucking box. Because to me, you guys are fucking scum for that. You put FFRs and you told us we weren't going to get any other fucking type of rarity. And you fucking lied about that. Now I have to buy a, I, I buy a box. I'm not even guaranteed an SP. I'm not guaranteed an FFR. That is bullshit. You know the first three sets of the game when we did the case openings? Every case we would get two play sets. Yeah. And every box would have an SP. So a case is 20 boxes. We get 20 SPs. We get two play sets of everything. It was freaking great. And then they were like, oh, we're going to add another triple rare. That turned out to be a big mistake because then we got a play set and a half. And then they're like, oh, we're going to take out the SP. We're going to put a frame rare and maybe a double frame rare, which the double frame rare just looks like an SP. Yeah. It has it, the texture of an SP. It's four. It's nice. It looks nice. Cool. Take that shit. I don't want it. I, listen, if you want to keep fucking frame rares in the game, guarantee me a frame rare and an FFR in a box. And the reason why I say this is because I want you to go on on, on these fucking on, on on these sites and see how much FFRs are going for. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And this is coming from a guy that works at a store and 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 and, and has these shits. Okay? What the fuck are you guys doing? And I know we've been going for an hour and you I know I promised myself that I wasn't trying to be the central focal point. I, I if you guys hate my voice, let me know. But today, today's podcast, I had to let shit off my chest. I, I'm sick. Of, I, I literally had Richard buy me fucking promos. Because I'm, I know I'm never going to get this fucking promo. And I, like I said, we as, we as a store, we haven't got any. You know how many times a day we come into the store and pe- we open at 4 o'clock, guys. 4 fucking o'clock. The first fucking person that walks through the fucking door either asks me these two questions. They'll say hi to me and they'll go, do you have promos? Do you have this? And you don't have to tell them? No. And then the next response is, oh, but this store in in, in South fucking Carolina or South Dakota or, you know, Houston, they have their promos and they're selling for $35 fucking a piece. Or you have to go fucking call fucking Indonesia then get those fucking cards. That's not how this should fucking work. So yeah, I had Richard literally, you know, I have to pay him back, but I had to pay for fucking Knight of Inheritance, Emiline, whatever the fuck. Emmeline. Emmeline. I had to pay, oh what? How much did you pay for these? I paid, for those, I paid a hundred bucks for the play set. Look at that. A hundred bones. That's twenty five dollars a fucking play, a card, and that's for a. Look, my, I wish I had a picture of this, and maybe Richard could put this in the th- fucking thumbnails. I'll put it on if you're listening to this on YouTube. Yeah, like it's literally a fucking deep promo. It there's no shine, it's not foil, there's nothing special about it. A fucking common for twenty five dollars. I want you guys to really think about what I'm talking about. If they want to start giving high price promos, when I go to BCS Spring Fest, or, I mean, you know, I go to Spring Fest or I go to BCS, I want a $25 fucking promo when I enter. I don't want no, oh, this is in the trash. Let's put this, let's put this out. I want my fucking $25 promos. Not like that gold paladin one we got. Yeah, I don't want that. If all three promos are worth twenty five dollars a beat each, I want them to be twenty five dollars fucking each. Give me my fucking promos. Or you know what, but sure. Here, I'm gonna solve your fucking promo problem. Go to fucking Atlanta or your fucking areas and have a booth that is like five dollars. Five fucking dollars or whatever. And give out my fucking promo. You know the whole point of that promo, that in specific, that one in the Overlord one was supposed to be like if you buy a, I think a box or ten packs of set seven, you're supposed to get one of those promos, right? But they came in packs. <laughs> we sold out a set seven 
like it's coming up on two months ago so if we get the promos now like it's so stupid we were supposed to have them before we got set seven and the thegria one before we got set eight it's like if they send it now what the hell's the point and besides I, us spending all the money for the promos i agree and i i'm gonna end this because we're, we're going over an hour i literally just had a conversation with richard before even started the podcast and i was like richard should i sell youth uh uh sell thegria he told me no of course because you know i'm trying to have every Keter deck but i looked at him and said the deck sucks without the fucking promo and that's an extra hundred dollars for a fucking promo and i again i am sorry for ranting this whole time you know if you hate my voice let me know i'm not you know i'm not judgmental or anything i love you guys too um but no th- guys this is crazy it, it's fucking crazy and this is a guy who loved this game for 10 years guys i just had to lay all that out of my my chest i'm pretty sure rich is gonna have to listen to all this when he when he does the pre records and all this stuff um, I do have one last thing to talk about. So, uh, Richard, the people want to know, how's the love life going? Same as last week. No, no special. No moments? one has hit me up from this podcast. Are you sure? Yeah. Not, not even a special YouTubist. Special YouTubist. Yeah, YouTubist. No. My new word. Oh man, I, she should definitely call you. Maybe next Friday. Yeah, very nice. You know, giving you thumbnails and stuff like that, huh? We can't talk about this, James. We can talk about this. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough about Richard and his love life. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to make a little funny segment. Um, but that's it, guys. I, I, I literally gave you everything that was on my chest. I, 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 I talked for like maybe 30, 40 minutes when I told <laughs> Richard I wasn't gonna do it. But um. We love you guys. We hope to see you guys at the next event. I hope, I really hope you guys love the podcast. Please let us know. You know, don't be afraid to text us, Facebook, Twitter, anything. Let us know how we're doing with the podcast. Because, you know, we, we, we're doing this because we love the game. And we love telling our stories to you guys and how we feel. And I want you guys to be honest with us. So hit us up, please. Um... With that being said, uh, the next podcast will be probably next Friday if we have nothing planned. And then in two weeks, we'll be at the Ramada. And if you if you don't know what that is, again, what's those dates? February 25th and 26th. Be there or be square. Come at, meet the Messiah. Uh, he won't be there. I'll leave the Keter there. Messiah. Oh, that's, that's me. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, come, come on down. We love you guys. And with that... I'm going to let it fly.